five to eight million dollars on this fight. Are those correct figures, ballpark figures? Um, Tom and Ron in there, but uh, I never, you know, discussed my purses. But... The World Boxing Council Light Heavyweight Champion, Matthew Saad Mohammed. Saad okay, Mohammed. decision over Marvin Hagler. Hagler's first loss in 27 professional fights. A mark on his career that still irritates him. And today, live from Portland, Maine, Hagler will try to even the count with Bobby Watts. Hagler, the top contender for the middleweight championship, set to be in line for another title opportunity. But he must be careful. He faces in Bobby Watts, a middleweight who also has title ambitions, a rangy six-footer who plans to make the most of this opportunity. Live today on ABC's International Boxing in Portland, Maine. Today, 10 rounds of boxing between middleweights. Mar Bobby Watt's fight career has really had two high points. The first coming against Eugene Cyclone Hart, 1974. Bobby destroyed him in the very first round. Second high point a year and a half later as Bobby took on the undefeated Marvin Hagler at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Here in round three, Watts on the right in the light trunks shows the speed of hand that became his trademark. But Marvin Hagler is a resourceful, tough fellow. He fought back, and here in round eight, pinning Watts in a corner, most of the Philadelphia crowd thought that Hagler had done enough to beat their hometown fighter. But the judges declared otherwise. Watts the winner, majority decision. Since that controversial win, Bobby Watts' career has been pretty much inactive in a state of eclipse. He has fought only nine times in four years, winning seven. This year, February 1, he took on Freddie Johnson. That means in the last 16 months, he's had only two fights, and the most recent action here, a knockout victory. Watch the left hand here against Johnson. It comes inside, it is short, it is on the money, and down in a lump goes Johnson, out cold. Earlier today, I talked with Bobby Watts about... Marvin actually met Willie Monroe three times, knocked him out twice. Here in their third match, Hagler removed all doubt about his superiority by literally destroying Monroe in the second round. He was so awesome in this fight and in others along the way that he couldn't get any bouts of consequence. Nobody wanted to take him on in the middleweight division. Until finally, in his 50th pro fight, he met Vito Antifermo for the undisputed middleweight championship November 30 last year. Marvin Hagler's career record was so impressive that he, the challenger, was installed as a heavy four-to-one favorite. And in the early going here in round six, he showed the kind of ability to justify those odds. But Vito Antifermo is not the kind of a man to roll over. No, indeed. He fought back. He took the fight to Hagler in that final round. They stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, both exhausted, and the crowd, as the final bell clanged, rose to its feet to salute the courage and ability of these two fighters. Many observers had scored the fight for Hagler. Came home, carrying his disappointment, went back to work. He's had one fight since the title bout with Anapromo this February with Lucif Hamani, and he showed in the second round that he has lost none of the fire nor the skill that carried him to the top. Earlier today, we talked with Marvin Hagler. He will have no ballot under main rules. The three judges will make the decision. And uh, a little show in the center of the ring between Bobby Watts and uh, Marvin Hagler with Watts enjoying an advantage in height of approximately three inches, as you can see, about two and a half. Ten-point must system under main rules. Three knockdown rule is in effect. Mandatory eight count required for each knockdown. No standing eights. Fighters can be saved by the bell. Can, I say, be saved by the bell. Hagler is the left-hander in the dark trunks and Bobby Watts in the white trunks. Watts has a two and a half inch advantage in height, if that is an advantage. He has no appreciable advantage in the reach factor. Oftentimes, that is the most important. He looks quite a bit rangier than does Marvin Hagler. Watts has a history of being a cutie sometimes, moving a lot. But as he told us, he's coming out looking today. There'll be no great amount of dancing, as perhaps his name Boogaloo implies. Hagler digging hard to the body and covering well as Bobby Watts retaliates. Watts 
almost in a peekaboo defense there. And Hagler trying to reach inside of it. Did slip the right hand jab in there. Hagler making the fight early. Doing the scoring early. Bobby Watt standing pretty much flat footed. Hagler at times has been quite boastful, quite boisterous in his media conversations. I thought him quite reserved today, quite to the point and interesting in his attitude that he realizes the championship was so close to him the last opportunity and he is supposed to get another opportunity in the foreseeable future as soon as Minter and Atafermo have their rematch and they are scheduled for a rematch in June. Got a good left hand to the body that time. Bobby scoring here in the final seconds of round number one. The referee is Rene Liberty. It's a good left hand popped in there by Hagler. Half a minute to go in round one. Despite his rangy appearance it is already apparent that Bobby Watts generates considerable leverage and here the blows thudding against the arms and forearms of Hagler all right that's round one from Portland Maine round number two scheduled for ten Live out of the Civic Center in Portland, Maine, where the Maine Mariners play their hockey. Beautiful new building in this old city. Marvin Hagler in the dark trunks. Bobby Watts from Philadelphia in the light trunks. Hagler fighting out of Brockton, Massachusetts. And that's a slip. First round, I thought, relatively even. Hagler early, Watts late. These are middleweights. Watts covered in that exchange, but in this exchange, he gets a solid right hand on the chin inside. Hagler going after him. Watts again caught by that right hand uppercut, snapped his head back. Looking to counter. Standing pretty much flat footed. He has been training, Bobby Watts has, for about with Ernie Singletary when this opportunity appeared. And frankly, if he should beat Marvin Hagler this afternoon here in Portland, Maine, he very obviously would be a probable choice to challenge the winner of the Mentor and the final rematch. Mentor currently the champion. Hard right hand by Hagler. Appeared to hurt Watts. Another right hand by Hagler. Watts is down. Just about the halfway point of the second round. Watts hurt by a right hand and then down by a right hand. Now let's see if Bobby Watts can run himself out of trouble. Time's passed. His legs have been suspect when he's been hurt. His recuperative powers are about to be tested right here as Hagler puts him down. It was two right hands that appeared to do most of the damage. Watts cannot sit on the ropes with Hagler. He's got to get himself out of the open. I don't believe he can survive if he sits back in there. Hagler facing himself, doesn't want to get too wild. Remember, the bell can save you under main roof. Watts trying to survive the round, now beginning to apparently stabilize a little bit. As he tries to beat Hagler away from him. Coming off the rope, a half a minute to go. Watts hurt by a left hand. He's in trouble again. There's the left of the face. 20 seconds to go. It's been all Hagler in this round. Watts is going to make it through number two. Goes down, but the bell can save you under main rule. Over. 
it's over. Well, now the parent appears some confusion on the part of the timekeeper at ringside because the list of rules handed to us, the bell could save you. Now we've got the discussion between the people at ringside, but it's relatively academic because Hegler had really abused Bobby Watts in the corner, and as time expired, Bobby Watts was pretty well out of it. So Marvin Hagler continues to be one of the most impressive middleweights in all the world. Bobby Watts said that he'd stand his ground, that he would try to go for the big punch. And I think the aftermath of this one is going to be one of considerable controversy because the bell could have possibly saved Bobby Watts. timekeeper was under the assumption that he could not be saved by the bell. The rules for this fight that I have in front of me say quite clearly that the bell could save you. And uh, there you are. The fight has been stopped despite the fact the bell was not rung on schedule. So we've got something to argue about. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> So some confusion between the officials and the timekeeper as Marvin Hagler stops Bobby Watts. Now here's the end of the fight. Watts goes down, and again it is the right hand to the side of the head that drops Bobby All down right. for the second All time the in the fight. Now, at that point, as Watts started to stand up, if he had taken an eight count as required under the rules, the bell would have rung and should have rung at about four seconds into the count. But the bell did not ring, and as a result, the fight was stopped. But it may have all been academic anyway, because uh, Hagler had really ripped away at Bobby Watts in the second round. So we'll be back to talk with Marvelous Marvin from Portland, Maine, in just a moment as he stops Bobby Watts. Out of the 1970s and into the 1980s. Congratulations, Marvin. First of all, Keith, I'd like to say thank God for my strength and the courage that he gave me to win this fight. Also, this fight was dedicated to a good sparring partner of mine, Andre McCoy from New Bedford, who was in the amateur plane there going to Norwood and the Polak uh, team there. So I'd like to dedicate this fight to him. Yeah, I knew Andre was a fine young man. Tell me about the second round now. You you got him about midway of the second round with a couple of right hands and made the rest of the round relatively academic, I thought. Well, really what I wanted to do was set this man up and put his lights out solidly. I was kind of scared of going 10 rounds with this guy here because I figured that they take it from me or either it'd be a draw or something real close. So I couldn't make it that way, so I had to hurt him. And while I knew that he was hurt, I stayed right on top of him and kept him working. This is Hagler country. They're not going to have any draws and take anything away from you up here. The first time I went over to Philadelphia, you know, that's the city of brotherly love. Right. I felt like I beat him then. So now I told him, I said, well, now you come in my backyard and see how it feels. Let's have a look at the first knockdown. Midway of the second round. Uh, were you surprised he was that flat-footed in front of you? Well, he started trying to knock me out in the first round, throwing all good shots. You know, he was really trying to scare me with those punches. But uh, by him being tall and, and awkward and whatnot, I missed a, kind of a lot of shots, and you see him moving back. Here's the right hand that really hurt him. The first one shook him. But here, I think you really popped him. With right in between. Huh? Yeah. Those are some good shots. It was just a matter of time. I wanted to really put him out solidly, but... You know, those days, I seen it in his eyes that he was shook, so I just kept the pressure on him, hoping for the knockout. Do you, uh, I don't know if you're really totally aware of it yet, Marvin, but uh, the timekeeper apparently was a little confused as to the fact that under main rules, a bell can save a fighter. In other words, you, you don't get the count on through the bell, so at about the count of four, the bell should have rung, but it didn't. So you could well have been called out for 
around number three, but as it turned, things worked out, I guess maybe it was the best well, thing. I think it was the best thing for Boogaloo because right then I just uh, zoned right in on him, and I had his moves. I was waiting for him to throw some more of those jabs. The first round when he's come out, like I told you, he was trying to bomb me, trying to scare me, you know, but uh, I've been hit by some harder punches and everything in there, so I knew I would eventually catch up with him within 10 rounds. What I like to do now is try to stay busy and stay active, and hopefully that uh, one of them guys, maybe if he don't answer for me or I'm meant to give me that return, give me a, a match at the championship again, I think I'd do a lot better. Here's the second knockdown. Let's take a look at it. Marvin, did you, you, you indicated you felt you had him hurt here. Right. I, what I wanted to do was set him up for the straight left hand, too. But uh, I seen the shot there with my right hand, so I just took it. There's a, there's a left, solid right on the head. Now I'm opening him up, waiting for him to come up. And uh, what I did with Antiformia, when I fought the Antiformia, I was moving backwards. But now I learned to move in. And this is what me and my trainer's been working You're on. You're getting a heck of a lot of leverage out of that uh, straight right hand. Oh, yeah. I'm, that's what sets him up a lot of time. And I'm looking for the big punch, but he was a smart fighter. I fought him before 10 hard rounds, so he kind of knew my style a little bit. But uh, I've changed over the four years. I've got better. I get the feeling, too, that uh, with this confidence, uh, there's come a, a, a discipline, a pace. You, when you had him in trouble in the middle of the round, you didn't get wild at all. You just simply waited. I think it comes from experience. I've learned that, uh, you know, because sometimes when you get over anxious and everything and start throwing those big bombs, your man still hangs in there. I think that what you should do is try to go with more speed, keep as many punches in his face, and uh, keep him as woozy as possible until uh, he Houston, Texas.